Hi everyone, welcome back to a Podmonger tutorial. Today we're going to look at just the basics of TurboSmooth and I have just a basic model already set up to kind of demonstrate some of the basic functionality of TurboSmooth. Um, so right now this is uh, just a an editable poly. It's a pretty low polygon right now and uh, you know just a block really. And so we're going to go ahead and go to the modifier list, put on TurboSmooth and see what just happens out, out of the box by default. And by default, iterations are one, and you have some other settings down here. And you can see that what happens is uh, the, the object is subdivided, so more geometry is added, and it tries to round out between each of the, uh, the edges. So here's what it is before Turbo Smooth, here it is after. And really, you know, that's not a great result really for what I'm looking for. I'd like to have, try to keep this box shape, but then keep this nice cylindrical section and then give it maybe some rounding and chamfering on the edges and have it all done just through TurboSmooth. And uh, the idea of that is that you want to keep as few edges and vertices as possible to work with to get your shape, but then in the end have a nice smooth and rounded uh, result and use TurboSmooth with that. So uh, let's just go through some of the basic settings. I'll turn this back on. So iterations are the number of spans being put between each one. So as I increase, you can see that many more edges and vertices are added in. Uh, by default, render iterations are at zero. And what that means is, so if I uh, if I have this at one, and I'm just hitting F9 for the hotkey for render, you can see it's smooth in, in, uh, in the render. And it's also smooth in the viewport. But say you wanna uh, keep it like this in your viewport so it's low poly, but come render time, you want it very smooth and uh, subdivided. So you can check that box. And then let's just increase it to five, so you can definitely tell that in the render it has smoothed. So it's at now at iterations of five for render. I hit F9 just to see the thing, and you can see compared to the viewport and to the render, the turbo smooth was applied only at render time. So that's kind of helpful if you're working on film and things like that. But for now, I'm just going to turn that off. Um, ISO spline I don't really use that much, but you can see that. Uh, it just kind of limits, it doesn't show as all the edges added in, it, it keeps the edges only that you started with and just shows a more basic cage of it. Uh, explicit normals I don't really use. Um, and then we'll play with some of the stuff down here. So I'll show you the smooth groups one, but I'll talk about the materials. And there's different ways to tell Turbo Smooth how to interact with your geometry. So if each of these faces or sides of the models, like this side here, and maybe this other side, say if they had different materials, TurboSmooth would treat those differently than the rest of the object. I'm going to do the similar functionality just through uh, smooth groups. So if I go back here, we'll check on smooth groups. And by default, let's check that on. Um, I'm going to faces mode. And then down here, there's a poly smooth groups section. You can see that if I select this, that numbers two through seven are all kind of grayed out and that means that those smooth groups are being applied to different faces on here. You can do different selections to figure out which ones are which but I'll, um, I'll go ahead and actually set up our own just so I have full control and knowledge as to which ones are being used. Um, so if I go back to Turbo Smooth and you can see now with that um, smooth groups option checked it's behaving a little differently than without. So here it is without the smooth group being checked and then here it is with smooth groups being checked so it's trying to hold the shape because it's using the different smooth groups but it's also adding in the edges and this is pretty much what I'll want in the end only will uh, make it look a little nicer by controlling the smooth groups better so I'll just turn that to zero for now and just go back to here and the idea of this is you want to separate the edges and faces um, so that the same smooth group isn't adjacent to each other. So I don't want this to be a smooth group. Actually, let's clear this out first, so clear all. I don't want this one and this one to be on smooth group of one, because you'll see what happens here. If I get that. If that was the result I was looking for, that'd be great. See how it's rounding those two together? And then up here is where there's a different smooth group. That's why it's keeping that hard edge. But if I want to keep that box shape, I want to have each of those uh, sections as their own unique smooth group, or at least just not a smooth group that is identical number to the one to its left or right and top and bottom. So do that. Just go ahead and grab some faces. So this will be my smooth group one. 
I can also make this smooth group one, but I don't want this top one or the other ones next to it to be smooth group of one. They'll get their own. So just smooth group one. Uh, and then these other ones here, I, I'll make those into a smooth group of two. This whole top face here, and even this one, can be smooth group of three. And uh, this one can actually be a smooth group of two because next to it are right now just smooth groups three. And this one can be smooth group three because there's smooth group one and two surrounding it. And uh, you'll see now when I go back to my turbo smooth, I have a much cleaner looking result already, even though it's subdividing, but it doesn't really look like it's changing the shape much. It's smoothing out that cylinder section a little bit. You can see here, you know, it, it's uh, less angular. Um, but I'm not getting the nice chamfer bevel edges and things like that in the end. So we'll go ahead and just up the iterations. <clears throat> and then we'll add another turbo smooth on top of it. So just go in, another turbo smooth. And this time we won't have turbo smooth groups on. We'll just leave it off with the iteration. So now you can see you get that really nice uh, chamfering edge but in the end, you have a very low poly model. So this is actually used quite a bit in games and film where uh, you work as low res as possible, but then you want to up res so that you can bake out normals or change it just for on render time. And you can see here that if I increase my iterations even more, obviously more um, polygons are, are formed, but the result is even nicer. So you can crank it up as high as the uh, detail you want to go. So uh, thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and you can also find me on the Polymon Grant Twitter.